So hello everybody, Bitwig 5 is out and it brings also an update to the API, so the application programming interface which allows you to do cool things with Bitwig via a program language. And the current version is now number 18, while there was nothing noteworthy to report about number 17, 18 brings new cool stuff. But before we dive into that, a question I get regularly is which version of Java should I use if I want to develop with Bitwig 5, for example. That's pretty easy to find out. You just enter the directory of Bitwig where the Bitwig installation is and there you will find a folder called JRE, so the Java Runtime Environment. And in the binary directory, there is actual Java Runtime and there you can just open a console window and type Java dash version and it will tell you what is the current version which is used by Bitwig. And this is currently the latest number 17, which is a long-term release. So it's very good to go with that. But what has changed in API 18? First, there were some functions missing of new features already introduced in Bitwig 4.4. We have now two new options for sends. First, you can disable them. And the other option is that you can also have sends on sends channel. So it could even create feedback. So just check that out, how that looks in Bitwig. If we go to the mixer, there is here a delay channel. You could disable them and then it looks like that. And the other thing you can do, as I said, is have sends on sends. So if you go here to the sends channel, you see even the sense channel has a send and you can even feed it back on itself. We needed some methods to do so. So the first one is just a boolean settable value, which is called is enabled on the send object. And you can just call the usual methods on it, like a setter to enable or disable it or to call its toggle function. The other two options are, first one is to create the effect track bank is already an existing method, but there is now a new version to be created via the host and to be created for a track. So you can now have this new parameter to give here the number of sends and then we will get the normal option to get a send bank for each of these tracks and then you can use it like you did before with the normal track bank. One of the main new features of Bitwig 5 is the option to have alternate launch options for clips. For example, you can say here the alternate launching version is that you want to have it quantized or not quantized. And for example, you want to make it jump back to the previous playing clip on release. And there's lots more options, which I will not get into in this tutorial. I did other tutorials about that. So you can also also check that out if you have never heard about that. First look the Bitwig 5 features overview video, for example, I did, and you will then get an understanding how that works. So we have here two things. One thing is the alternate launch or release options. So we also have new options for stopping a clip. And this looks like this. If we are in this horrible name, clip launcher slot or scene. So this works also for scenes. Let's have a look at the scenes as well. So if we select the scene, you have also alternate options for the scene, which then applies these settings to all the clips in the scene. Heading back to there. So before that, we only had a launch method on this object. And now you have also this alt option. So for example, you can code it like the user has presses a shift key if there is a shift key on this device or any other key, and then presses the pad, then you call the alternate launch method. And this happens then on release. So this is also new. If you release a pad, for example, you call the release. And if it's in combination with shift, you can call the alternative one. And there are the same methods as well if you use the binding framework of Bitwig 4. If you have never heard about that, there is also a tutorial on my YouTube channel on the API tutorial playlist, which explains how these new hardware API works. And then you can also use these action bindables instead of the normal methods. But there are more methods for launching and stopping. So if you want to 
stop the playing clip on the track. In the alternative version, there is also a method for that. And again, the version for the action bindable. And we have it also on a whole bank, which I think should not be used. It's just a different version of the previous methods. But on the other way around, for example, you can say here, launch alternative one on the bank, which is the index in slot. Yeah, which does basically the same as these methods, just executed on the other way around via the bank. There is also a breaking change to be uh, aware of if you use the launch mode method and change it or get it. They had previously in Bitwig 4.4 and in previous versions these three value options. And since these got extended in Bitwig 5 now, they are changed to these five constants. So be aware of that to update your script or your Java code if you used that method before. Another cool feature many people love is the new features for Brocheck and hardware remote controls which allow you to map parameters from the whole project or here from all devices on the track. And these can also be accessed now via the API. So you have a method on the track to create the cursor remote controls page works exactly the same as with devices. And there's another one where you can give it a name and also add some filters for that. That's the example here. You would normally create this from the cursor track if you do not want to have that for each and every track. So you could also say for all of your tracks in a page, you want to have parameters. If you build a very, very big device, you could do that too. But normally you would only get the current page of eight parameters from the currently selected track. And the question is, how does it work for the project since there is no other method? So there's a trick for that from the controller host to get the project and the project has a method to get the root track group, which is basically an invisible group, which is on top of all the top tracks in your project. And from that, root track group, you can call the same method, create cursor remote controls page, and then we'll get the one for the project. Something to be aware of, it's not a totally perfect implementation currently. So the other method you normally create is a cursor device you follow and again get the parameters for this cursor device. But you cannot navigate to that area here on the left. But if you click on it in Bitwig, you will get these parameters in your cursor device, which I think is a little bit weird. You cannot navigate to it, but you will see the parameters. And even if you show devices on a display on your external device or tablet or whatever you code via the API, you will then see totally different parameters, but have no idea that the user currently selected Pro check the hardware. So I think that's a little bit of something that needs to be improved in a future update, but currently be aware that it works like this. So moving on, some little but nice features. Again, something which was already present in Bitwig 4 is the support for clap devices, but there was no method to insert a clap device. So currently you could insert VST devices, but not clap devices. So this is now also theirs. And this ID can be retrieved as before. For example, here is a VST. And if you click on that, you can say copy device ID. I can move it up. So now, yeah, copy device ID to clipboard. You need to activate this before. This was also in a previous tutorial about using the new device API. So check back on this tutorial if you don't know how to make this menu item show up here on this menu. So the same works now for clap plugins. So let's get here a clap plugin, for example, here Hive, why not? And there is also then the option to copy device ID and something to be aware of. If you look at the copy device, you will see there is a version number of this plugin at the end, but the parameter you give into the method. So this ID is only the previous part. So you have to remove that part 
And this will then work as the ID. Be aware of that. Next one is a nice little feature that you have now on the project variable, which I also showed here before. You get from the host this project information. And there is now this new method is modified. And this gives you the state if the project was modified by the user since it was created or loaded from hard disk. And there's another new feature. You have a new option for solo value. If you had multiple tracks soloed, you could clean that state at once with one toggle method. There are some options for that in the settings in Bitwig. Let's see if we can find them. So there is an option for exclusive solo, and this will be respected. If you use this new method toggle using preferences, I think the best practice is that you use this new method instead of the old one, which will not respect the setting. So just switch your code to this new option. We also have two deprecations. So the old browser should not be used anymore and the pop-up browser instead. So this is no surprise here. And the other one is indication is now controlled by the user and no longer by the script, which makes a lot of sense, I think. So you should also not use the set indication method anymore. So if you have not seen that in the settings of the controller, you can now turn on and off if you want to see the clip rectangle around your tracks here, for example, like this. And you can even now set the color. And this can now be controlled by the user here in the settings. And you should not control that anymore from your script. So that's it already for API 18. And I hope we will get more cool features along the line in an API 19. And until then, write some funky code.